Hi, my name is Donna Mawala. I'm the founder of Bub to Sleep. I am a paediatric sleep specialist. So I support families who are expecting up to children seven years of age. I am a mum of three, three girls, teenagers, or two teenagers, one preteen, and I'm married. I've been married for 20 years. So I feel like I've got lots of life experience to share with people. And I love sharing my stories because I've had lots of uh, lessons in life as parenting. So my passion around sleep is what made me look at becoming a sleep specialist. That was six years ago. Um, I was a stay-at-home mum for 10 years. So I um, sort of lost myself, well, completely lost myself in parenting. And that was by choice. My husband um, was a physiotherapist and he started his own business and I, I stayed at home and I loved it. And I really, really found it challenging at times, but I was also thankful that that was a choice that I could have because the biggest thing working with so many families over the last six years is traditionally women did a lot of the housework and were the parent, the, the main supporting parent. And that hasn't changed. But the thing that has changed is women have to go back to work. They either choose to go back to work because they want to, which is fantastic, or they have to because life is so expensive. So we don't have that luxury of possibly staying at home by choice if you want to. Um, and so for me, I got into sleep uh, because it was such a huge part of my life and I suffered from things that I didn't know until I was later in life that I got diagnosed, but um, I had really bad anxiety and um, in later in life been diagnosed with ADD because on the journey with my children and they've got it, I was like, mm, that's me, that's me, that's me, that's me. <laughs> so um, the journeys and lessons that I've had, I can reflect now. And so I've been passionate about sleep for 17 years. I stayed at home uh, for the 10. And then I, when the children went to full-time school, I was like, I need to do something for mums. I find that that was the hardest change in my life. And you lose yourself. And there is a word for that, and it's called matrescence. And it is the big transition, a big transition from what you were to what you become when you become a mother. And it's if you do become a mother, you lose yourself. You do, and you have to rebuild, and um, and and we don't talk about that. We don't talk about that, and um, we just have to do it, and we suck it up. And um, women are amazing because we put our families first. We put ourselves on the bottom, and so I was doing that all the time, being a stay-at-home mum. And I don't want to say just a stay-at-home mum because I didn't have a life really, other than my mum, my pet being a mum, and a wife, and in a group of friendships which I'd had forever that I was just this same person that um you know canteen managers coaches you know which again I don't regret but again on reflection I've lost I lost myself completely so getting into business um and this is part of my chapter that I I, I always talk about my backstory. I'd like to be vulnerable and authentic about things that have happened because I think if I, so one person can read my story and think, oh, that's me, and they've got um, something on their heart to start a business for themselves, then just do it. That's what I keep saying, just do it. So my biggest thing I spent, how can I help mums? How can I help mums? How can I help mums? Because it's such a big transition. It's really lonely being a mum, you can have a lot of people around in your life, but you can be really lonely. And I was really lonely in my head because I had undiagnosed ADD, which then gave me anxiety and depression. But on the outside, no one really saw that because I would, if I was struggling with that, then I would just stay at home with my children. And um, that's not great either. And my regulation of my emotions was constant because I didn't want to get upset with my children. I wanted to have patience with my children. So why I keep bringing this up about a neurodiverse brain is so many people are talking about ADD and everyone's got ADD. It's actually not the truth because as much as it's my superpower, which it truly is, it has also been debilitating at times. And because I'm someone who likes keeping it together, likes everything perfect, likes to have control of everything, then my mind would just completely have burnouts all the time and no one would know, not even my husband. I remember reversing out of the driveway to go to the doctor to ask about medication and he went why and I thought oh my gosh that was that was like 10 10 years ago and I thought wow if my husband doesn't know how much I'm suffering 
wow. And I didn't even pick it up back then. So the journey of my struggles continued and it was internally. So the best way to explain ADD, particularly in women or children, because I've got the girls, is um, you have heard attention deaf or hyperactivity. So you see particularly boys might be really hyperactive. Um, and for women, it's usually... Um, attention deficit so I might be looking like this on the outside but my mind is hyperactive so it's like a million tabs open that aren't closed and then that causes anxiety so then again I want to get into this a little bit deeper because I struggled so much and I have been able to create a such incredible successful business so if I can do it anyone can do it that's why I share my stories now, because even a few years ago, I would have been embarrassed to talk about this. I'm also finding it a little bit now that when we talk about it, people are like, again, everyone's got ADD. Why is everyone being diagnosed? And that is really shameful because as much as I feel confident talking about it, now I'm feeling shame again, you know, because there's a label. But we've been through so much as a family, which has been really traumatic um, because our children have a neurodiverse brain. And so to understand it, is and sharing my story it doesn't need to be scary but let's talk about it because it's not the norm <laughs> and so I've got lots of families lots of people around me whose children don't have that neurodiverse brain and it's going pretty well for them so not that our kids aren't in a great spot now but it's been really hard so along with my children being diagnosed me being diagnosed I wanted to create a business six years ago so um you still have to parent, you still have to be a mum. And the biggest thing is trying to understand yourself. So if you're a mum watching this and you're wanting to be an entrepreneur or a business, a business, not just, but a businesswoman, um, understand that we're going to have the balls juggling in the air all the time. And sometimes we've got them and sometimes they're all dropped everywhere. And that's normal. It's normal to drop the balls. It's normal to be feeling that you're putting too much time into your work and not your children or vice versa. This is just the norm. This just let's make it real. Um, but I didn't give up. And the last three years have been really, really challenging um, with the teenage girls. They've had really struggled with their mental health and stuff like that, which again, they're okay for me to talk about, but they've come out at the other side and we've learned so much. So getting back to that is if I can do it, anyone can do it. Um, and sharing a little bit of my inside of my story of, of struggles, because on the outside, if anyone sees me, I've got makeup on, I'm dressed up and I'm this. Yep. And if I feel I can't be around people, then I don't go around people. So that's why people don't really have understood the depths of where my mind was at. So the biggest thing is having tools of being kind to yourself. And, and I didn't, wasn't really great with that either because I felt that I wasn't kind to myself and I wasn't doing a good enough job in all spaces. And so why would I be kind to myself? Why would I give myself that time to go for a swim in the beach or have a massage or sit and watch Netflix? And so that, this is what's happened is that I'm trying to be kind to myself. Everything settles down and then everything's karma. So you can spend that time in the business. Also, I feel like when I started my business and I didn't mean to because I loved it so much and I was being my authentic self and it was really going very well, um, I kind of ran away from my troubles because <laughs> I was like, well, these people really like me and I'm helping them with sleep. So, you know, the, the reality is and why I want to talk about it is owning your own business isn't for the faint-hearted, like I say in my chapter, but don't be frightened with that. You know, don't think of the bigger picture all the time. Think about today. What can I do today? Who can I reach out to? Um, and and if you've got a passion in your heart, that's that's really my biggest thing is like I've never been money-driven, even though money's lovely to have, But and you've got to be careful with your money, but uh, I've always been heart-driven with whatever I've done. And so that has led me to such incredible places as my business. And also the biggest things that have been the most exciting things have been the scariest. So if someone gives you an opportunity and say you're not a guest speaker or you've never spoken in front of people or whatever, just say yes. Just say yes and then you'll sort it out later and you will feel so powerful or empowered once you finish that and then you'll you'll be able to do other exciting things. So getting back to, to business, I do want to talk about that is, um, again, sort of focusing on mothers, um, is that you still have to mother. <laughs> so be kind to yourself, like I keep saying, like space it out. So spend your time with your children, you know, that undivided attention at times, but then really segregate that time for your business as the children get bigger. And I didn't start until the kids were in full-time school. And so many mums that I meet, particularly women that are starting business, 
have babies, have small children. And I, again, think, wow, how are they doing that? They're super women. So in regards to starting your business, uh, start start of that glimmer of hope in your heart and then just start writing of what you want to do. My biggest um, tip would be um, set it up like it's going to be big, like it's going to be a big business. So that would be... Um, you know, having a good accountant, having a good accounting system, you know, getting your tax sorted that when you start earning money, um, your own bank account, um, expenses and stuff like that. I always, always, when you have the money, and sometimes you don't always have the money, invest in good coaches. So business coaches, um, healing coaches, psychologists, whatever. Keep healing yourself. He keep healing yourself and growing because not only when you become a mama, mum, mama, uh, it's like a mirror. So you've got to deal with all your demons and all the stuff you've got to deal with. Owning your business is like my fourth child. So the ups and downs of running a business, you have to really look at yourself. You have to be your authentic self. And like I say, in regards to um, social media, it's very uncomfortable for people to get started is get a social media coach to, to get you out there and do it. Um, I had um, an amazing person, Heidi Anderson. She is the PR queen and she got me from out behind my logo, which completely changed my business. It tripled. And so many things like that, like get into what's happening in the world now, be yourself. When you go onto Instagram and Facebook, the biggest thing to think is don't think about your family or your friends looking and that you're going to be embarrassed. Um, you think about those clients walking in your door. So if you think of Instagram as a shop, and you're standing at the counter and someone walks in and goes, hi, how are you? What are you going to do? Hi, how are you? I'm so-and-so. Look at our product, blah, 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 blah. That is what Instagram and social media's media are, is your shop front. So if you think about it like that, get out and go get it. Don't give up at the hard times. That's the other big thing is like the times, particularly the last few years, have been really, really challenging. I have limped to the finish line every day. I have kept my clients going, but nothing else in my business, I could do anything because my emotional support had to be with my children and that will happen. You will have ups and downs. It's life to have good times and bad times. It's just normal. And so it's like surrendering to that difficult time, but don't give up on your business. Um, social networking, like actually go meet people. Like word of mouth is still amazing. You know, like anything word of mouth is still going to be worth an advert. Um, so really just being yourself, being yourself. You don't have to share your stories if you don't want to. You don't have to be vulnerable if you don't want to or aren't ready, but be yourself. This industry I'm in, the sleep industry, is now a very flooded, unregulated industry. And so when I started six years ago, it wasn't so. And so um, the biggest advice is just be you. Don't worry about other people. Don't worry what they're doing. You just be you. And then don't watch anyone who makes you feel like crap. And then what will happen is people will love you. So you being out there and on social media, if someone is watching someone on social media that doesn't show their face much and it's just sleep stuff, and then I'm talking about my life stuff, um, sleep, you know, I would hope that they get to know me more than the people that are just stagnant with their with their posts. Um, the other thing with what I've ended up doing is you start with something in your heart. And now for me, I have an incredible podcast, The Parenting Collective. Uh, again, I was really out of my depth to get started. But again, Heidi Anderson, um, the PR queen, um, she uh, helped me get to push me to do the podcast. Now it's one of my favorite things. So it's called the Parenting Collective. And what it's all about is um, experts in their field in regards to parenting. So that is my passion too. So really, as much as sleep's still my passion, now it's evolved into actually sharing my stories, um, being there, being vulnerable, being there for our, for mamas to um, do the best they can. So I've talked and talked and talked about um you know, being a, as a woman entrepreneur and Oz mumpreneur is particularly what we're talking about because everyone's mums um, is, re and also reach out. You know, I'm happy to give out, out my tips and stuff about um, business. I love sharing my mistakes. I love sharing my wins, where to hone in on because I've, I have wasted a lot of money and time um, on things that 
don't work. So if I'm happy to give out those tools so people don't make those same mistakes, but we're going to make mistakes. You're going to get hurt. You're going to get let down. You're going to be rejected. And the times that you're rejected, it's okay. <clears throat> again, you surrender to it. You just go, okay, but you either try again or you have another avenue. And so don't ever give up is my final say. Don't ever give up. If you have a passion and a light and ignite your heart, um, do not give up. Don't rely on the people around you to, to say, yes, you should do it because not everyone's going to be in your corner, which is sometimes happens is you just be you and you do what you need to do. Obviously, like I said, be careful with the money, but um, just do it. Don't think of the big picture. It's just start, start what you would like to do and take that first step. Take the first step and I promise you, you'll be so happy. Thank you for listening. Bye.